local government elections. Three words that make you think, maybe living in Myanmar would be better, then I wouldn't have to vote as much. Tell you what though, this one on December 4 is exciting. It makes me feel like ripping off one of my testicles and putting some little pipe cleaner legs on it and doing this. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I do that over a local government election. I've got another. And the reason I would is because this time you could be responsible for flushing out dozens of filthy property developers, real estate agents and crooks out of Australia's bureaucratic bowels in one blow. This election could go down in history as the great enema of 2021. Let me just get on the record the least controversial point I'll ever make. Having property developers in control of planning a city is fucked. Not as fucked as learning that a celebrity's favourite politician is Kamala Harris, that ruined a lane for me, but everyone from the Greens to Alan Jones agrees that property developers are ruining this country. In fact, not even property developers will defend property developers. They will sue you if you call them property developers, which really should highlight just how unrepresentative the New South Wales government is when the only people in the country that will stick up for property developers is the coalition. Couldn't be because they're a party filled with property developers. God, no. They defend them on ideological grounds that are Hilarious. When I tell you them, you will be this monkey. Oh my god, the monkey. Oh my god, he's doing that shit. You have been warned. Take your pants off in advance. You're going to have a surprise turtle at some point in this video. But back then, this is what would happen in the bad old days. 2010, dark time. And although Kevin Rudolph tried to regale our spirits with his incredibly bold claim of being a rock act that had next to no guitar in his songs, back then, when either Labor or Liberal won on a local or state level, there was a bunch of... And I don't want to be mean to my people here, but... Wogs. I'm sorry, but they just are. Every time. Yeah, boys. Got my cousins to vote for me. You're scared of branch stacking. Get ready for a full-blown family tree. If Labor won. Oh, yes, dude. I love the working bands. They're the only ones that want to live in this shit. If the Liberals won. Oh, they don't have any morals. Yes. No disguise necessary. Nathan Rees, who I honestly think is the most underrated Premier. Either him or George Fuller, who was Premier for seven hours. Go, George! Full work day if you count lunch and a smoke, oh love. Nathan Rees fell on his sword trying to expel Obed and Tripodi, and that's before ICAC because, quote, My ability to do good has been impaired at every turn. That was because at that point, the cancer had spread throughout the body, developers controlled the party from within, Reese did what he could. Crazy stuff when your mighty freckly head is infested with lice, and despite Obed and Tripodi controlling the party from within, he still banned donations from property developers. Huge. Also, how good is this? Property developers fought that in the High Court, whining. How about the miss? They're restricting our speech. And again, just to show you how niche and radical the coalition actually are, despite everyone in Australia thinking, well, never thought I'd say this, but it turns out freedom of speech does have its limits. Awfully sorry, Meredith. F off. The Nationals wanted to lift the ban on property developer donations. You see the difference, right? You see a little difference between the two parties. In fact, here's a little poll. Like this video if you think that's somewhat revealing. The Labor Party clearly was and is fighting the virus, while when it comes to the Liberals, they gave property developers a level of power that they could have only have dreamed of even in the OB days. Council doesn't get a say anymore in projects where there's like 5,000 apartments dumped next to this lovely little old lady's house. They don't have to listen to their recommendations of maybe you should put a park in the centre of this cement block. No, just make the kids rip cones in her garden. That's a park. Horrific cutbacks on safety regulation that have resulted in building material that's pretty much napalm being used to make apartments for the Chinese. A lot of them smoke, the building burns down, and then they get to develop it again. Circle of life. And even more horrific, privatise the inspection process. No government oversight at all, leading to 85% of new builds being shoddy slums. I bet even Rand Paul would look at these apartments and think, This, uh, this isn't what Ayn Rand said it would be. In short, there's a reason that when you talk to housing experts of any capacity, they will all privately tell you don't buy an apartment built in the last 10 years, which, coincidentally, is exactly how long the Liberals have been in power. I mean... 
Mascot towers were built when Labor was in government, but they only cracked after Berejiklian won in 2019. Coincidence? Anyway, enough bashing the Liberals. It's time to venture into uncharted territory here, talking about how sick Labor is. Once ICAC did its big purge of the Labor Party, they thought, OK, that was on par with being as embarrassed as when you asked a girl out in year six and... Oh, sorry, Jordan, I'm actually going with Roy. Oh, OK, um... I was just joking anyway. So anyway, just like you, they thought, let's make sure that never happens again. Let's ban property developers from running for office in the Labor Party. And they did it. You tell everyone you know. One, merch available at freelygeordies.com. But two, tell them that property developers cannot run as Labor candidates. Banned. You also tell everyone you know that when Labor's Mark Buttigieg said, let's make this parliament wide, let's ban them from running for office full stop, everyone agreed except you'll never guess who, the two parties infested with property developers. Dean, uh, Madam President, the Labor State Conference prohibited candidates from nominating for public office if they were a property developer or a real estate agent. So this has been part of Labor Party policy for quite some time. And what we're seeking to do now is put it into practice, put it into law, given the litany of uh, corruption that we've seen associated with local government and the current legislative framework simply not catering that is. for this conflict of interest. Now, the as advertised excuses, ready to shit yourself? I know I am. I'm actually really worried about commenting on things said in Parliament. I learned that the hard way. Their first argument was that banning property developers is unconstitutional. If anyone ever says anything is unconstitutional, they have not read the Constitution. They've watched a lot of One America News and think they live in Florida. But that argument got demolished by Labor's side, so they went back to Old Faithful. Oh, here she is! She's about to erupt! Don't forget, Eddie O'Bead was in Labor. In Labor in more than one way. I was giving birth to mad schemes. Oh, right on time. How does it know to do that? Keep in mind, the Liberals just had a Premier added on corruption suspicions, development being a huge theme just a few weeks before, but no, nope. let's not forget the Minister of Fisheries in 2003. Let's just walk through the Liberals' argument here. They bring up Eddie O'Bead as a reason for not stopping future Eddie O'Beads. Don't you think the Mad Hatter would have had a better argument? An insane man's hallucination of an insane man would have a better argument. The third one was just lifted out of George Bush Jr's excuse for not tightening the tax code. I've just found other ways to dodge tax. Like this. Whoa. Except it wasn't delivered in a charming southern gentleman accent, it was delivered in a broad Australian accent. And we sound like a horn that's having a whinge that someone pressed it. So yeah. Obviously, smart developers will find ways to cheat the system. They do under Labor's rules as it stands. But have a look at most property developers. They're fucking morons. Look at this man. How long do you think it takes him to solve a Sudoku puzzle? Three days? He'd struggle to fathom. What, I have to get my brother on the council? I can't do it. If the Liberals passed Labor's law, it would wipe out probably 70% of the obvious. Oh, they ruined that street. It used to be lovely. But the Liberals won't even introduce that basic level of separation on the obvious conflict of interest that clearly exists there. On the contrary, they've made all kinds of horrific changes to the building code on a state level, and that's going to trickle down to the zoning decisions on a council level. Meaning that if your neighbourhood looks like this now, just imagine what it'll look like in another five years with all the changes in zoning local councils will make. Councils are the last defence barrier left. The silver lining is the general population senses this after every suburb in Sydney is basically the castle if the bad guys won over and over again. The resentment is palpable. And as always, the press won't tell them who's to blame, which is why you are going to. You're going to make memes and you're going to put them on every one of those strange little shitty shinge of cabra matter Facebook pages that are essentially a suburb wide current affair telling them one, Labor banned property developers from entering their party. 
Two, though it's not a perfect net, they've been pushing for five years for the Liberals to do the same thing who flat out refuse to this day because they are a party of property developers. Three, the Liberals are well aware of the community's resentment towards property developers and so they've made a bunch of their property developer friendly candidates independents. They're still Liberals, they're just not allowed to use the logo. So be extra careful of that. Look at Stratfield. After we released our video on the multiple Liberal property developers sitting on council, the Libs didn't endorse any candidates, meaning they just have this Trojan horse independent scheme running. So if you're in Strathfield, don't vote for convicted frauds to Matthew Blackmore and independent One Nation staffer Nella Hall, vote Labor. The councillors there are planning a massive clean up if they get elected and the only way the Liberals can stop them is if their independents get in. And whilst we're on the subject of local councils, remember Narendra? If you're in Narendra, you finally have a chance of cleaning up your council because Stuart, remember that guy from the doco secret dictatorship? He's running. And although he doesn't expect to win, give him a vote anyway. How epic is this poster? We need to go back there. I just need to ask him, are you a wizard? And finally, number four, obviously the most effective step, you're gonna give us money on Patreon cause come on, how funny would that meme be? <laughs> But if you do that, you will f the Liberals up, sorry, property developers up this election. Let's show them all what it's like to live in a house of cards. Please share and comment below. Come in.